final setup. I think this is going to work. Um, Gooville Podcast, Episode 6, man. I'm your host, Xavier Dixon. Uh, it's good to be back. Um, sorry, my camera is kind of like trying to make sure I get the eye contact going, but we're going to get to it, man. Uh, long time coming. Uh, we're going to name this Let's Try This Again, um, just because it's been so long. Um, just here to do a little NFC AFC Championship review. If we had Chiefs minus two and then Niners minus five in the parlay, so see how that went. But with the AFC Championship first in Baltimore, uh, Baltimore Ravens 10, Kansas City Chiefs 17. So, real tough, real, real slug fest game. Um, Ravens hold the Chiefs scoreless in the second half, but it's still not overcoming. Still not enough to overcome Pat Mahomes and uh, Steve Spagnuolo. Just a lot of stuff going on in that game. And Travis Kelsey passed uh, Jerry Rice with the most catches in postseason history. So that's just amazing or some stuff. So it's like, I feel like it was kind of written. You know what I mean? But uh, Chief uh, Kelsey caught all all 11 of his targets for 116 yards and a, and a touchdown. And... Uh, it just sometimes it just comes down to that when you have one, one a key player that can just continually continuously eat. Um, I feel like Andy Reid definitely had a lot of uh, simple not simple plays, but um, just screens and like calm passes for um, Mahomes and not necessarily a ton of like drop back stuff. Versus uh, Lamar, he was getting a ton of drop back stuff with like not much run game. But we'll, we'll get to that a little later. We'll still talk about uh. <clears throat> Hit on Chiefs offense right quick. So Pat's uh Pat's passing. Um one for two for thirty-two yards on passes twenty yards or longer. Uh three for six for fifty yards and one T D on passes ten to twenty yards and then twenty six to twenty eight for hundred and fifty nine yards on passes uh ten yards or less. So I mean pretty proficient there. Um not a ton of uh, deep balls thrown. Uh, three for six in the intermediate area. I think that's where the touchdown from Kelsey's at. So, um, T's defense definitely able to get after Lamar with the blitz. Um, two sacks, but it felt like more with the constant pressure. Uh, obviously, uh, Lamar was, la- was able to um, escape some of that and then <clears throat> get some good scrambles. But <clears throat> Baltimore had four sacks, and it just – it was a winnable game for him, honestly. It, I feel all the the opportunities were there for the uh, offense. Um, so I don't know the, the turnovers, two fumbles, loss, and an interception. It's just more pen, with the penalties. It just cost them. You know what I mean? Ravens offense three eleven on third down. I don't know. I mean, it's like I'm not even trying to hear. The, I'm not even here to bash Lamar. I feel like everybody's been concerned with Todd Munkin, or <clears throat> everybody was questioning Todd Munkin, but I feel like I saw it as he's trying to put the ball in the MVP's hands, and I guess I'm not gonna say that. I'm not trying to say like people are saying it was too much, but I feel like it was enough plays for Lamar to win, man. But um, they definitely could have ran the ball more. I feel like when I watched the Ravens' offense, I feel like it was not enough play action pass, but maybe I could be like lacking. I feel like. I could just be a play action pass like junkie because I feel like I say that enough when I even watch uh, San Francisco and Kyle Shanahan is definitely that's like one of his go tos. But um, only sixteen carries as a team, and Lamar had eight of them. So it's it's just nasty. Like I'm not even here to cape for Lamar, but I don't know. But yeah, you just gotta give you gotta give credit to Steve Spagnuolo and the defense and the, and the Kansas City Chiefs, man. They just they did what they had to do, and I definitely see I definitely saw it as, I mean, it was it was a little bit mind boggling with the Bills rushing for so much um, previous week. So I don't know. It's probably one of those games where it's just. A lot of shaking heads, I guess. Um, Lamar passing uh, two for seven for eighty-four yards, one touchdown, one one interception, 
on uh, throws 20 yards or longer. So I believe that uh, touchdown was that scramble play uh, where he evaded and threw it out to um, where he threw it out to Zay Flowers, and it was a great play. Um, but uh, one for four on one for four for 39 yards on throws 10 to 20 yards. Um, and 17 for 23 for 149 yards on throws 10 yards or less. So a lot of underneath throws, a lot of like dump downs. Um, talk about the Ravens. We want to say there's no, there's no weapons. I mean, they paid $15 million for Odell. You know what I mean? Obviously, he did not have the all pro impact you may want from a $15 million player, but. They had guys, man. Isaiah Likely, Zay Flowers, and they tried to fork. I think they did try to force Mark Andrews back with them. With the, I think uh, Likely was just a he's just a hotter hand. So you gotta, you gotta, you gotta feed that. You know what I'm saying he can stretch the stretch the field, which you need for offense. So I think you, I think we really saw just how nitty and gritty it comes down to in the NFL, just because. Ravens held the they, they held the they held the Chiefs scoreless in the second half, and it, it's like the Chiefs defense stood up even taller. You know what I mean? So it's like I don't know, man. It's it's just one of those things where it's like when you don't when you don't capitalize where you got to capitalize, it, things get exposed. So <clears throat> I'm probably gonna have to bounce back to the AFC Championship just because like. <clears throat> Chiefs winning, Taylor Swift effect, Travis Kelsey effect, Isaiah Pacheco effect. We really, we really got to play these people. We really got to play these dudes again, man. So, Lions traveled to Santa Clara, um, lost 31-34. Um, Niners with the biggest NFC championship comeback ever of 17 points. Um. Brock and Kyle Shanahan just, they had to do what they had to do, man. <laughs> I hate to say it, keep saying that, but overcoming the 24-7, 24-7 deficit, uh, scoring 27 on in the second half, just, it was revitalizing, and obviously it got sparked by that throw to, the, that throw to Brandon Ayuk, but, I mean, it's, it's just, that's just part of football. I mean, shout out to Brandon for seeing it through, you know what I mean? It's like. You just gotta. Sometimes it just it just falls in your falls in your court like that. So, like Brock said, he was trying to give Brandon a chance, and shoot, that chance came through. So, <clears throat> Lions offense uh, definitely was rolling with the with the passing and the, the rushing. To be honest, it's like the golf effect. I feel like we couldn't really stop them. The Lions having Lions having their way. Um, defense and line couldn't get off blocks. Lions rushed for one eighty two. Um, 29 carries, 6-3 a carry, so just deflating, um, deflating off rip with the 40-yard Jameson run, just sweet, no stunts, it's like, it's just player, player gap, like, Lions offense, um, they were doing their thing, but we're gonna get to the passing, like, I, I'm just, I'm, I'm analyzing everybody's passing, man, just, we gonna, gonna chop it up, I feel like that's gonna be the Cause that's what it comes down to. You know what I mean? Like they say QB wins ain't a thing, but I mean who the pressure on. So Jared Goff passing uh one for seven for twenty five yards on throws twenty yards or longer. Uh twenty one for seven for twenty five yards and five for nine for seventy eight yards and a touchdown on throws ten to twenty yards. So not bad. 19-24 for 170 yards on throws, 10 yards or less. So, 19-24 um, for 24, 470 yards on throws, 10 yards or less. Um, it honestly felt like, I'm not going to say it felt like we, I was watching the Shanahan offense, but just how golf was getting into, like, he was giving it, he was giving, just how he was distributing it to pass catchers, and they were getting, like, yak. It was just like, what's going on, you know what I mean? So, it, it felt like. You know what I'm saying? We were watching the 49ers a little bit. Just how we, you know what I'm saying? How they get, how we start getting rolling. Just a few deflating plays. I'm about to get to the, fun, the film and cut that up. And uh, 
the Jamison Williams jet sweep, the Jameer Gibbs fifteen yard rushing touchdown, the run on third and third and twelve, and then the fourth and goal touchdown by Lenore by Diamond Lenore. Probably the most deflating plays on defense. And maybe I'm I obviously I said I, I had Niners minus five as my pick. So I could be salty about that. But I mean I mean the win is a win for sure, but it's a little deflating when you know you got a like a better quarterback going in with Patrick Mahomes, so that had me worried, you know, just almost feel like I'm seeing the secondary get picked apart almost. So um the defense played zone on all twenty two of the dropbacks in the first half. That's what I'm saying. So it's just like when I watch when I watch Steve Wilkes, it feel like it's so like vanilla. Like I'm used to seeing Robert Sully and D'Amico Ryan's like get exotic with no matter what the no matter who the personnel is, which I mean like I kinda like, you know what I mean? Like as a guy who kinda like I guess I mean, I like defense too. So I mean, I mean, obviously you got Kyle Shanahan, but you gotta, you gotta, you gotta switch it up and be able to get to different looks type thing. So I mean, I'm not gonna say obviously they they switched it up a little bit in the second half, but it's a lot of quarters, a lot of a lot of three, and I don't even feel like he plays a lot of cover too. Like maybe I gotta, maybe I need to watch more film. Like I ain't even trying to be misquoted, but it's just like. Boys be dropping soft coverage. So, um, 49ers off, uh, Brock Purdy passing, uh, six for six at, at the line of scrim- at the line of scrimmage for 60 yards, uh, six for 10 for 37 yards from 10 to 20, and then seven for 12 from yard. I'm sorry. Six for ten for thirty-seven yards from ten and under. Six for ten for thirty-seven yards from ten and under. Seven for twelve. Seven for twelve for one hundred nineteen yards, one touchdown, one interception, from ten to twenty, the ten to twenty zone. And then one of one of two for fifty-one yards for passes twenty yards or longer. So, not asked to not asked to throw a lot of deep shots. Um, that drive with Brandon Ayuk catching that uh, catching that diving catch after running it like after after the deflection definitely sparked sparked the offense because uh, they stopped him. They stopped the run. Then Purdy missed the uh, second down. I mean, uh, yeah, yeah, Purdy missed the second down throw. Then. Uh, he had to hit Ayuk for the third down and in traffic. So that was a, that was just a big play. Uh, it was on display. Brock Purdy's rushing, more so I'd say elusiveness for real, for real. Um, five rushes for forty eight yards with a twenty one yard run on second eleven. Um, uh, that was four minutes in the, in the third quarter. And then he had a ten yard scramble. Uh, in the fourth quarter and a 21 yard scramble in the fourth quarter. So I feel like them, those uh, three runs are definitely probably like the most impactful. Just like, just keeping the drives going and keeping the uh, starters going. So I'll look at this. I think the uh, the opening line for Chiefs 9 Super Bowl was. Two and a half. I think it went up to three. I think it went back down to one. I'll see what it is. I'll look at it on my phone. All right. This is a crazy intermission. But uh, it went from 2.5. I think it went up to three. Now it's a one. 49 is one point favorite. So I think that's just Vegas showing respect to both teams. Obviously, obviously it's two. I don't know what to say, man. It's greedy, man. That 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 nineteen loss was uh, it was wild. You know, I know a, a lot of the players. Act, I'm not acting like. Obviously, they have to they have to say it doesn't mean anything to them, and it's a different team. But it's not it's not really a different team. You know what I'm saying same quarterback, same tight end. I mean, I guess they don't have the same receivers or whatever. But 
defense still greedy. You know what I'm saying? They saw that their defense was greedy in 19. So, I mean, they know what to expect. Um, I'd say Brock Purdy, obviously, was, he wasn't his sharpest. This game, the interception was bad. Um, but he, he played tough in the second half. Played, he kept fighting in the second half. Um, the Packers game, he was rocky. Uh, so it's just, he could play sharp. Just got to continue to try to keep, get the job done. So I'd say my Super Bowl prediction um, is early. So I'm obviously trying to get back to the con- I'm, I'm Obviously, I'm getting back to the content. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to try to put, I'm going to have me, me getting back to the videos, back to the pods, man. Trying to get the consistent pods. Um, I'd say early prediction right now, I'd probably go 49ers 30, 49, sorry, 49ers 27, Chiefs 21, 49ers 27, Chiefs 21. I don't know. I, I, let me let me move to Coach and Carousel just because I feel like I've been moving too long. Um, this is this is a this is a little teaser pod, just because um, need to get my reps back. Need to get my reps up. Definitely longer pods to come. I tried to pod last week. Honestly, I potted last week and uh, decent length decent length pod, but it was just it was junk. Hopefully, this is better. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah. Coaching carousel, um, NFL coach carousel, 18, eight NFL teams fired their coaches. Um, I feel like my most notable fires were Pete Carroll from the Seattle Seahawks. Uh, had a record of 137-89, one draw over 14 seasons. So, uh, one Super Bowl win, one Super Bowl loss, pretty sure, right? One, two appearances. I feel like he had a third, but I could be tripping. Uh, Mike Rabel from tight from the Tennessee Titans. Maybe that's not super dramatic, but I feel like the Titans definitely had a peak. They just missed their window bad. Um, didn't really capitalize on like the draft. I feel like they didn't really like trading around. Trading AJ Brown was obviously like one thing, but it's just like even I'm not gonna say without him. I don't know. They had a window for sure. Um, probably peaking in that. 19 AFC Championship. I guess that's their highest window, but I think he's still a pretty solid, like pretty solid coach. Um, yeah, Bill Belichick from the New England Patriots. Uh, obviously, it's no shocker there. 24 years, 286 wins, 121 losses, six Super Bowls, and nine appearances. So, uh. Only lost it to two teams, Giants and Eagles, twice to Eli, one of Nick Foles. So, I don't know, great stature. Uh, notable hires, uh, Jim Harbaugh of Los Angeles, uh, Dave Canals from Tampa Bay. Uh, da- Dave Canals, the Tampa Bay OC, now the Panthers head coach. Uh, Raheem Morris from Rams, uh, Raheem Morris from the Rams. Defensive coordinators from the Rams. Raheem Morris is now the head coach for the Atlanta Falcons. Um, he was, the, I believe, he was the interim when Dave, uh, Dan Campbell, not Dan Campbell, sheesh, Dan Quinn got fired. Um, so, definitely room for uh, Raheem, man. So, always been a solid guy. Uh, Gerard Mayo uh, is... Gerard Mayo uh, becomes the youngest coach in the NFL, um, taking over the Patriots. So, definitely, I um, hate to say it's pressure on him, but I think I think he's definitely got a solid. Uh, uh, Antonio Pierce places Josh McDaniels for the Raiders. Um, so, that's three, three black... Three black, three new black head coaches, um, 
that's definitely not gonna say have pressure on them. Um, I feel like anybody, I feel like the Raiders might try to do Antonio Pierce three just because they like were so hesitant with the hire. But um, I'm definitely rooting for all three, man. Uh, representation is important. And uh, obviously those guys really don't get a lot of shots at head coach. So definitely rooting for them. Um, need to do some more research into Dave Cannell's Raheem Morris and uh, see what's up with that. You know what? I was going <laughs> to... Potting. We potting, man. I can't, I can't only do 30. If we're going to pot, we got to pot, right? 341 in the morning, man. Gooville Podcast Episode 6. I wasn't going to do this, but I guess I'll just like hit on some quick thoughts from the Divisional and the... Uh, Wild card. Not that it really matters, but um, just to uh, get my thoughts out there. You know what I mean? All right. So divisional. Uh, Ravens versus Texans. Ravens are nine point favorites. Uh, Ravens won thirty four ten. Uh, the Texans had a shot, man. Uh, I believe D'Amico Ryan was already a, awarded uh, NFL Head Coach of the Year. So I need to double check that, but I'm pretty sure that was announced. But solid season out of him. Um, I feel like they definitely could have like won that game. The first half was pretty tight. Um, I'm not going to blame the OC because obviously I feel like a whole bunch of Ravens. Uh, a whole bunch of Ravens. Fans are kind of feeling like that right now, so quick, we'll look quick, we'll look quick. Um, because not too much really matters, but Derek Stanley did give up two touchdowns. Uh, former LSU cornerback, um, Lamar went 16 for 22, 152 yards, two touchdowns. Um, even Stanley gave a touchdown to Nelson Aguilar and uh, Isaiah Likely, who, like I said earlier, like I think he'll be. I mean, it's not, I'm not breaking news when he does. I think a lot of people said that, I mean, have seen that he can definitely be a good successor to Mark Andrews. Like, he stretched the field. I'm not going to say he's like a great blocker, but I'm assuming he's a decent blocker. Um, but the pass catching ability is there. Like, yeah, Lamar had 11 rushes, 400 yards, uh, some scrambles, some design runs. But uh, I think the whole signing that, I feel like as the whole. The run, whole runner conversation as, like, the greatest runner. I don't know. It's still tough. Like, I feel like I do kind of still see Cam Newton as, like, the best rushing quarterback. But I feel like I know, I, like, Lamar obviously is, like, more explosive. But I feel like now, I'm not going to say he's lost a step. But I feel like, I mean, he's not as nimble. So, um, I think he did have, he still had the longest rush of the day that day with, like, a 23-yarder. But, I don't know. It's like. Maybe he's just a smarter runner. I know he did with that. Put I know he did put like fifteen pounds of muscle on, so gotta credit all that. But um, still hit on still hit on a quick just because these games were like just a previous quick rewind. Um, Packers forty nine. Uh, Packers forty. Packers versus forty niners. Um. Just. Complete sweat fest, complete sweat fest. But Dre Greenlaw put the team on his back with two interceptions to help seal a 24-21 win to push San Francisco to, the, to push San Francisco to the Super Bowl. Um, that 24-21, that 24-21 win, obviously got him to the NFC Championship. Um, just gonna hit on it real quick. Uh, Matt Lafleur and Jordan Love covered the spread nine points. I think that was pretty heavy. Um. I think that's just the this that's just been the what we've seen from the 49ers defense in the playoffs. Like they've been not necessarily giving up explosive. Maybe I should check the passing chart again, but maybe I feel like they, they give up, they're just so vulnerable. But explosives are just like 
passes of 10 plus yards. Like, I know that, I mean, like I said, I did just say for the, I did just say in the versus the Lions that they kind of, in the early on, I feel like they were, get golf was distributed to underneath guys and they were kind of getting like a lot of yak. But I feel like the Packers, it felt like a little bit versus the Lions too. It was just like, the back end was just getting attacked, so that could be that could be some that could be a lot on Wilkes. Like I said, I don't I, I haven't been like what I seen from Wilkes, uh, just leaving the guys kind of in the same rotation of stuff. But uh, he 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 switched it up in the second half, so we only need to rewatch the second half to try to see what he kind of changed up in there. Um, but yeah, Amory Thomas had a few uh, costly DPIs. Um, I believe he got banged up in the um, got banged up in the MC Championship game, but I didn't. I don't think I saw. I don't think I heard Shanahan say anything, and I don't think he was available for media. But um, just another thing to note. I mean, I'm sure the the Andy Reid, Andy Reid, and the Chiefs have seen. Well, they say they ha- like. I know it's early. They probably say like they haven't seen tape, but I mean they're about to get to it. Like they're they got people that that of. Are that are already getting to it and they're breaking down the film, so they can see where their their vulnerable part their their vulnerable parts are. I feel like even with the, I feel like even the linebacker core even got has gotten attacked a little bit. Um, I feel like some, with some of them jet sweeps and stuff, I feel like you can like blame Fred. So I don't know. I mean, yeah, Greenlaw had Jameson too, you know and I'm saying he didn't tackle him. So it's just it's tough, you know. What I mean, it's really a team game. Um, so. We'll see if the toll team's locked in versus uh versus the Chiefs. But um did like Traverius Ward did have a, a decent I mean a, re- a really good PBU in the low red zone on a third down when uh Ambry Thomas gave up a DPI on the Packers first drive. But it's just I feel like Wilkes is like scared to blitz. Like four man rushes with no stunts, and we saw Green Bay have some sick. Like we have some. I just feel like we had. We saw Green Bay have success running the ball in and out too. So like, I'm gonna have to watch that 22 of the Packers game. Obviously, the 22 probably not out yet for the um Lions game, but I'm gonna rewatch that just to see like what I can see from the switch up side from maybe some of the pass plays, but. When the kickoff team gave up that for seventh yarder, Demetrius Flanagan Foles definitely had a good effort with the fumble, uh, forced fumble. But Green, Green Bay were, Green Bay recovered, and Jordan Love threw that like that that good uh, skinny post. Um, and then Four Niners got beat with the pick play. Uh, for uh, Fred tried to go over top, but the defense definitely bounced back when they fought at midfield. Um. Love tried to overthrow and hit Aaron Jones, but Green that's when Greenlock got his first pick. And uh it's like the defense definitely could have played better, but I feel like it just they get those scrappy stops, you know what I mean? So it's just like if they can capitalize on the early I guess the like if they can capitalize on the like or just get better at defending the exploit the exploitation points, then defense could definitely improve. I think that just starts with Steve Wilkes disguise and stuff. Like, I don't know if he's just that bland of, like, I'm not going to lie. It's been a while. Like, I ain't going to lie, man. It's it's wild. Like, I used to watch when I was on, when I was on SB Nation, or I was on Niners Nation. I'm kind of, like, watching the game as it's my job because it it was. So, it's like I'm, like, writing super notes and I'm watching all 22 and all that. Like, I haven't really watched 22 super heavy this year. That's why I'm trying to, I'm just getting back to it now. Wilkes, man. Don't cost this bull. Not too much on Wilkes because I definitely think the DBs could have defended the uh, run. And I mean, not the DBs, but I think the team, the defense as a whole could have defended the run better. And the DBs could have made better plays when the ball was in the air. That's just one of the things that I think the 49ers uh, defensive backs have always kind of like struggled with just because the emphasis, maybe like, I feel like the, the, the draft emphasis is not really heavy there. I mean, I guess you could say Jair Brown and Diamond Lenore and Ambry Thomas are because they're getting heavy run uh, lately. But it's more so like 
like high capital high, high capital draft players. They're gonna go D line, O line, and uh, it's been receiver, right? Debo IU or Debo was second receiver, second round, whatever. But uh. When Aaron Jones had that 53-yarder on Green Bay's second position in the fourth quarter, uh, San Francisco shut the, uh, the run on back-to-back plays and played strong versus the pass on third down to uh, force the Packers to get field, uh, get a field goal when they were threatening to go up 11. So that's just, that's just one of those like another one of those snarky moments. Hold the themselves are just high enough. They 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 hold themselves in a high enough. I don't even know the words. They hold themselves accountable enough to prevail and do these moments. So it's just like, if they can just continue to clean it up. I don't know, man. Carlson missed the field goal there. Um, Pretty had a good throw to Brandon Ayuk. Uh, And a hard fought nine-yard scramble. I guess that's like the early, the early, like, runs we could have saw. Shanahan said in the and the pressure, like we we've been seeing that from him from college too, which I kind of get it, but it's like it's not like he features it. You know what I mean? He's not like he's giving QB design runs. So, um, yeah, love throws a second interception in the game is kind of it. Uh, but my takeaways from that from that game, I probably should have already said that. But Romeo Dobbs had way too many gashers. Um, But yeah, I definitely love like my my another takeaway that I probably was trying to get out before the, the whole uh, Niners Lions game was I love to see Wilkes get more exotic, you know what I mean? Like switch stuff up, switch stuff up. But like looking back at it and seeing that he played zone on all the dropbacks, like all twenty two dropbacks of the first half is just like stuff I was seeing earlier. Like this is stuff I probably was gonna it was stuff that I had on the other pod, but it didn't get out. You know what I mean? My wife can't stop me from this one getting out. <laughs> just joking. Uh, but uh. Yeah, I mean, just I like he's he's got, he's got he's got weapons. Even with Randy Gregory, Chase Young, those guys, you gotta you gotta you gotta go plug and play those guys. Whether you gotta put them in a three technique or what, whatever, like you gotta mix them guys up and try to let them wreak havoc. You know what I mean, let let's make sure. We gotta make sure Eric. I, we gotta make sure Eric Armstead is affecting the game, man. He's a solid. I think he's a solid interior tackle, but I feel like we still just um, not even to be pressure on the whole sex combo. But it's just like the whole even with like against the run. I just want. I need to see him make some splash plays. I feel like we haven't really seen that from him. So I'm, I'm holding Wilkes accountable on that with the no stunts, the no really, no no real. Change ups and no real. Oh, this guy's playing nine. Oh, this guy's playing zero. Like, let's switch it up a little bit, bro. But, uh, yeah, I'm just talking to my mic. Um, I definitely think, uh, Juice could get more, could get utilized more. I think we saw him get an early target in the first quarter. And I don't know if he dropped it or if he was, he was off, but it's like, why is he not getting enough? He should be getting at least three targets a game. It's easy. Like maybe I'm maybe like I said I'm just a guy talking to the mic so obviously me, I'm saying I could write up a game script for the 49ers but it's like I mean bro you got these weapons you paying this guy you paying Kyle Uzcheck like he's a future running back which he pretty much is with his blocking up capabilities so you got to use him. Um, George Kittle could get more targets. We see him. We saw him get featured a little bit today, but. A lot, a lot more comes out when the All-22 comes out, so I can't really say too much. But another thing, I'll probably go ahead and end this with that uh, takeaway. i definitely say uh, Juwan Jennings, Ju- Juwan Jennings' is 61 yards, 61 receiving yards felt like 100. So he came through big time with the catches. Uh, bigger, bigger, all right, Bucks at Lions. Um, Baker Mayfield couldn't pull the upset to Detroit, uh, but Mike Evans may have crushed my agenda as being a great receiver. 
So, not even that I said that. Not even that. Like when I say that, like I like I watched him beat Bama. So like I've been watching Mike Evans since I was like a, you know, high schooler. So definitely like obviously definitely a great receiver. But I probably say like when when like great to elite. That's when it's like oh is he elite? So it's like he's a he's a he's a pretty he's a pretty strong receiver. He's a pretty damn good he's a damn good receiver. So um. I would definitely like to say guys like Julio and Amari, Julio Jones and Amari Cooper are better, but it's like, do their careers really amount up to it? Like, I know the, the numbers game kind of wicked or whatever, but it's just, it's got to be real talks being had, man. Like, I can't just have the, the, the Bama bias, the Bama blonders up, you know what I mean, just because I'm a fan. Because, I mean, I do rock with guys, you know what I'm saying? But, uh, yeah. But 147 yards on 12 targets to prove his worth um, for a receiver that turns 30 in August. So the shelf life for a receiver just it just kind of dies down after like 33. I feel like like if you if you're really doing stuff after 35 as a receiver, like you really like built like that, like like you just you just different. So um, 10 straight years with a thousand yards receiving, and he led the NFL in receiving touchdowns this year with 13. So, 31-23, uh, Lions over Bucks there, but probably the game with the most action of the division. Probably the game with the most action from the divisional round for sure. Um, Jerry Goff and Baker Mayfield uh, definitely kind of got like got the NFL kind of not back in action, but I don't know. It's just like like you kind of that's kind of more so like that new run and shoot type offense. You kind of the new run and shoot type games you kind of see. Now, but like Chiefs, Chiefs and uh, Chiefs Lions definitely a slugfest, and then Niners lot. I mean, did I say Chiefs Lions? Chiefs Ravens was definitely like a slugfest, but Ravens Lions was a little bit of shootout, a little bit of like offense for real, for real. So it's just the tail of two, tail of two games in the NFL. Um, but yeah, Jameer Gibbs, I feel like he's definitely been a Solid addition to the Lions. I'm on, I'm on a Ross St. Brown. Uh, solid addition to the Lions. So, see what Jared Goff going to do, man. They going to pay Jared Goff? Or are they going to draft a quarterback? I don't know. I believe Jared Goff's on his last year of his contract next year. So, um, that's tough. Uh, but, uh, yeah. Chiefs. Chiefs traveled to Buffalo, uh, beat them 27-2014. Uh, beat them in OT. Josh Allen had no turnovers and didn't get sacked and threw a tuck, threw a dot to Stephon Diggs late in the game, but Diggs dropped it. Uh, Stephon, he threw, a, he threw a dot to Stephon Diggs late in the game, but he dropped it. But Pat, Pat Mahomes, master class, throwing the ball 17 for, 20, 17 for 23 for for 216 yards and two touchdowns and a 24-yard rush. Um, Miko Harman, Miko Harman tried to give the game away with up three, up. Miko Harman tried to give the game away up three early in the fourth quarter by stretching out and fumbling uh, for a touchback. Uh, same thing we saw. Yeah, obviously I'm speaking on it now, but we saw that. We saw Zay Flowers get penalized with that. You know what I'm saying? A little bit, so just guys trying to make a play, you got to be responsible with the ball. Um, yeah, Tyler Bess's 44 yard miss, uh, wide right miss is why you might, uh, why you must hit on all cylinders in the playoff time. So, ultimately, Steve Spagnolo's defense continues to be solid, and it's just, it's just what the 49ers are faced with, honestly. So I feel like hitting on that, I feel like coming back to hit on hit on that little divisional was definitely good, um, just because like it kind of it just all relates back to the Chiefs for real, um, and just the playing field what of what the um Forty Nineers had to go through, so yeah I'm definitely about to get on the film, uh, get this out for y'all. Uh, did I talk about Jim Harbaugh? Did I talk about Jim Harbaugh to the Chargers? Like I don't know if I talked about that. All right, 
Chargers have Khalil Mack, 32. He's entering his last year of his contract. Um, entering, his, entering his 11th year. Am I reading that right? Um, highest paid player on the Chargers. Um, scheduled to make 17. I mean, he probably get, he probably get restructured this year. That's what, I, that's what I'd say. Um, but just a few just a few questions on their team: Keenan Allen, Mike Williams, um, is Eric Kendricks a free agent. Let me go to their free agents. My bad. All right, Chargers twenty twenty three free agency list: Michael Davis, corner, had seventy six percent of snaps, twenty nine years old. Uh, Austin Johnson. Uh, Austin Eckler, obviously heavy, big name there. Only only played twenty four percent of his snaps last year. Twenty nine years old. Gerald Everett, tight end, 30, 50 percent of his snaps. Kenneth Murray, um, a Chargers draftee, right? Easton Stick, also a Chargers draftee. Uh, Jalen Guyton, is he a Chargers draftee too? Sheesh. Will Clapp, center. Nicholas Williams. Alec Erickson, Dean Marlowe, Nick Vanette, 31. The last, last four players are 31 or older. Justin Hollins, Will Greer, quarterback. Joshua Kelly, running back. Yeah, a lot of Tanner Muse. So, I mean, a lot of, I don't know, uh, it's on Harbaugh to see what, what's Harbaugh's shelf life to be. How long is he trying to be coach in the NFL and why? Not why, but. Where does he think he can maximize out of Justin Herbert for real? He's entering the AFC West. Pat Mahomes. I feel like the Raiders, like Antonio Pierce might can do something with the Raiders. Not even trying to say like they're Super Bowl bound, but like. I could be gassing, but it's I think it's a decent decent enough roster. Maybe I gotta see where J- Jimmy G is like at contract wise, but it's talent on the Raiders, so it's not like he's walking into some like super great situation in Los Angeles. So uh Alright, I'm tired. I'm probably about to try to get into this film even though I'm tired it's for but I'm trying. To, I'm trying to cut this film for real. But yeah, I think we'll hit like hit on some film. Uh, maybe do another like preview. Maybe have like a early draft board or early NFL um, early first round mock. Maybe I don't know. We'll do some for episode seven. But it was this was fun getting back to it. Uh, I'm your host, Xavier Dixon, Gooville, Gooville Podcast, Episode 6. Let's try this again. We're going to have that green screen. Gonna, green screen coming soon, man. We're, gonna, we're trying to add some more uh, picture-in-picture stuff. Just trying to grow, get better. So, appreciate your time. If you, you've made the video, made it this far in the video for sure, uh, catch y'all. Definitely follow. Uh, subscribe, like, comment. Please comment. Let me know something where I can do better. Um, cause I'm trying to be more consistent for sure. So like, uh, definitely shout out to Joe Budden, Joe Budden podcast and, uh, Homeroom University for sure. Uh, Homeroom University and the LOI the show, they've been going hard. Uh, boys out of, uh, uh, guys out of, guys out of Raleigh, North Carolina. So they definitely kind of helped me kind of like get back on the mic and kind of like show me like, Hey man, you can do this too type thing. So. Definitely trying to get back to it. Uh, Just getting better, man. Uh, On the road to 100 episodes. Let's go.